I am Pastor David Becker, Pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks also to KKN Radio for broadcasting this service. It's also available online at stjohnaitkin.org. That's stjohnaitkin.org. The present time we're holding in-person services at 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings. On this, the day of Pentecost, we make our beginning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said it will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We now confess our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, and I'll begin at the 24th verse. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, my Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, and it, I'll begin at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. 
And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the mul of the multitude came together. They were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthenians and Medes and Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia and Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God, and all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered to the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, a great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week in the children's lesson, I talked about the stole that a pastor wears. Uh, the stole as a reminder that uh, the pastor is not to speak what he wants to speak, but speak what, the, what God wants him to speak. It's like a yoke around the pastor's neck, just as oxen or horses might have some kind of yoke on them as they pull a wagon. Today I want to talk about the fact that I have a red stole on. Um, why do I have a red stole on? Uh, last week I had a white stole on. Uh, well, last week we we're still in the season of Easter and white is the color of Easter. And today is the day of Pentecost, and on the day of Pentecost, the color is red. Why? Well, red is the color of fire. And on Pentecost, as we just heard, uh, the disciples were, in a sense, on fire. They would received the Holy Spirit, and they were able to speak in languages they had never studied. But there is another sense that which we see fire in the story of Pentecost. There was a mighty rushing wind that filled the entire house and there were tongues of fire that appeared to them and rested on each one of them. Yes, today we celebrate Pentecost. Today we celebrate the fact that not only did those disciples there receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, but so also, through the waters of holy baptism, we also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are able to believe in Jesus as our Savior, and we are able to speak about that Savior to others. Amen. Our Gospel lesson is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 7, verses 37 to 39, which read, On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he had said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus has not yet glorified. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. 
we now confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Our text is uh, our gospel lesson, which I just read. Um, John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39, which I'm just going to read the opening words. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Here ends the reading of our text. Today in this sermon, I want to follow a Jewish man who was living at the time of Jesus. This Jewish man was one who did as the law required. That means every year he would leave his hometown, he would go to the big city of Jerusalem for each of the three required feasts. The three required feasts were these, the Feast of the Tabernacles, the Feast of the Passover, and the Feast of Pentecost. We will call this man Joseph. The Feast of the Tabernacles, which also went by the name of the Feast of Booths, was a remembrance of how the Lord was with Joseph's ancestors as they wandered in the wilderness. In that time, they lived in tabernacles or booths or what we call tents. God was with them in that time. God was with them, giving them water to drink and food to eat. The Feast of the Passover was a remembrance of how the Lord had convinced Pharaoh to let his people go. The angel of death had come through the land of Egypt, killing all the firstborn. The only ones who avoided this were God's people who had sacrificed the lamb and put the lamb's blood on the doorpost. Because they had done this, the angel of death passed over their homes. And the Feast of the Pentecost marked the beginning of the harvest. It was the time for God's people to bring the first fruits of the harvest to offer to God. Now we get back to Joseph. Joseph enjoyed going to Jerusalem, even though there were lots of people in the city. Because, remember, it was a required feast. It was still an opportunity to spend time with family. It was a time to reconnect with old friends, perhaps. It was a time of much food and celebration. J Joseph's favorite part of the Feast of the Tabernacles was going to the temple each morning to watch the, the, the water ceremony. That's when a priest would fill a golden pitcher of water and then pour it out at the base of the altar. As the priest did this, a choir would sing words from the book of Isaiah, chapter 12. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Whenever Joseph heard those words, he remembered what his father had told him. That rock that their ancestors had drawn water from in the wilderness wasn't just a rock, it was God with his people, giving them the water of life. On the last day of the Feast of the Tabernacles, what they call the Great Day, the priest would do the water ceremony seven times. It was on this day that Joseph heard a man say, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of 
living water. The one who said these words was Jesus of Nazareth. Joseph had seen Jesus once before when Jesus had passed through his hometown. Jesus was one who taught with authority. Jesus was one who healed people of various diseases. Some were wondering if Jesus perhaps could be the Christ, the promised one. Joseph didn't know. Now Joseph was wondering what Jesus meant by saying that people could come to him and drink. In the wilderness, Joseph's ancestors had come to the rock and drank. The rock which Joseph's father had said was God himself with his people. From that rock river flowed rivers of living water. And so Joseph was wondering if Jesus was saying that he is God himself among us. As Joseph went home that next day, he couldn't help but think about it. Not too long after that, Joseph is back in Jerusalem. This time he's there to celebrate the feast of the Passover. To this feast he brought a one-year-old lamb, one without blemish, to be sacrificed at the temple. This was a reminder of how God had used the shedding of the blood of a lamb to bring their ancestors up out of the land of slavery. One afternoon during the eight days of the feast of the Passover, Joseph noticed that something was going on up on a hill outside the city. As he got close, he saw that it was a crucifixion. There were three men being crucified that day. To Joseph's surprise, one of the men was Jesus. The three had been hanging there for a while. It was near the end. In fact, Joseph saw the soldiers break the legs of the one on Jesus left, and then the, on the one on Jesus' right. It was a way to speed up the death process. Jesus must have already been dead because the soldiers just thrust a spear in his side. And when they did, out of his heart came water mixed with blood. Not just a trickle of water either, but a stream of water. It was then that G Joseph remembered what Jesus had said a few months earlier. On the last day of the Feast of the Tabernacles, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Seven weeks later, Joseph's back in Jerusalem. This time, he's there to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. Joseph had brought the first fruits of the harvest to give to God. In the last seven weeks, Joseph had heard the rumor that Jesus had risen from the dead. And not just a few people had seen Jesus alive. It was said that over 500 people had seen him at the same time. Joseph kept thinking about Jesus' words. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. As Joseph was headed to the temple to, prevent, to present his first fruits to the Lord, he happened upon some of Jesus' disciples preaching. He heard one of them say, And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. When someone asked the disciples, what shall we do? One of them said, repent and be baptized every one of you for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. That's when Joseph believed in Jesus. Joseph repented of his sin and was baptized that day. He received the gift of the Holy Spirit and out of his heart flowed rivers of living waters. Joseph was one of the first fruits of God's harvest as he came to faith. So it was for Joseph, so it is for us. We are the ones who are far off, that the Lord our God has called to himself. 
We once were slaves to sin, but we have freedom that comes with forgiveness. We who hunger and thirst for righteousness know that the rock that provides living water to us is here. And we can drink from that rock and never thirst again. Jesus is the lamb who was sacrificed to bring us salvation. We who are baptized have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who enables us to tell others about Jesus. And in that way, streams of living water flow out from us so that others know Jesus and his love and his forgiveness. Remember, the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, when you filled the disciples with the Holy Spirit, 3,000 souls were called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified. Likewise, fill our congregation, our synod, and the whole Christian church on earth with the Holy Spirit. Renew us that the sacraments may be administered faithfully and many more would be called to the gospel, enlightened with your gifts, sanctified and kept in the true faith. Almighty God, you delivered your word through Moses and the prophets and fulfilled your word in Christ. He was planted in death for our sins and raised for our justification. And in him shall all the nations of the earth be united. Give us pastors who will preach this truth faithfully and church workers who are devoted to your service. Almighty God, you promised that all who drink from your living water will well up to eternal life. Help us to show forth in our holy lives the fruits of the Spirit and to live with love toward our neighbor. Remove all pride, prejudice, and hate that we may not hinder the cause of the gospel shamefully, but give welcome to all people in Christ's name. Lord of hosts, we give thanks for those who've served our nation through military service. And we remember with gratitude those who gave their lives for us in the cause of freedom. Help us to honor their sacrifice by using our liber liberty responsibly. Keep safe all who travel this holiday weekend. Bless our nation and help us to protect and increase the privileges we have for those who follow us, looking always to you from whom these gifts come. Light of this dark world, you have sent the Holy Spirit to your church as the Comforter. Soothe the wounds of your people according to your will, bring restoration to broken families, heal the sick, uplift the depressed, provide for the poor, uphold the forgotten, and answer the prayers of all who call out to you for aid. We especially remember those that we now name in our heart. Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune, and defend us against every error, that we may continue steadfast in the faith, increase in love and good works, and trusting firmly in your grace for us by his death, obtained eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. I would just tell you that um, We'll be having Vacation Bible School at St. John's, July 10th through the 14th, 
from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Uh, if you'd like to register your child, uh, ages four up to uh, going into sixth grade, we'd ask you to register at stjohnaitkin.org. That's stjohnaitkin.org. Once again, that's uh, Vacation Bible School, July 10 through 14, from 9 to 11.30 in the morning.